Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Y'all a brew heads? Yeah, we brew heads. So pour a glass of craft beer. We can do this. Yeah. What's good, y'all? This is C-Certified Brewhead. And I am Scott Beer Cole, Beer Enthusiast. Welcome to another edition of Beer Out here on BAOS. Scott Beer Cole, we get a big one. Huge. 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 It's huge. So this one is a little out of control, to be honest, for one BML, but we thought we'd thug it out. So huge, huge shouts to Ella at Dunham. Uh, he blessed us with, uh, as the kids say, enough of them anting. And, um... Eloi, not Eloy. Yes, yeah, so I made a, a boo-boo and I was... We, let's be honest. You did too? Yeah. Okay, so we messed up and we were being our Anglophone ourselves and we pronounced his name wrong, so I apologize, my man. Uh, so it's, you know, to say sorry, we're going to review your beer. <laughs> it's, and we haven't had any of these. Um, oh. So we got a bunch of different things, but we figured these are the five ones and some of these, actually one of them... I can't tell from me. I think it was this bad boy at the time hadn't even come out. Yes. Uh, when we did the podcast, which was episode 77. What a legend, though. Such a G. Man. Um, so we have five beers. Uh, this guy is a 4.5% Belgian blonde ale on berries. It's also only in French. On berries. This guy is a 6.5% uh, blended, barrel-aged, Flemish-inspired sour beer. 6.5% Saison Fleurs Reserve, a flower yeah. saison. You can say some stuff there. Oh, there's English stuff, is yeah. it? Which I can The second, the bottom one. Read. No? Doesn't matter. No. This is an 8% barrel-aged Hellesbock with Brett. And this guy is a 9.5% Russian Imperial Stout oh, with God. Costa Rica... El, yeah, El my guess. Van de Waal Coffee from Detour, which is uh, here in Toronto, actually, funnily enough. We're in Toronto, by the way. Shout out to T.O. <laughs> Shout out to T.O. <laughs> <Shout out to T-O. laughs> so, let's just get this going. Oh, so the funny thing, even though this wonderful brew heads opener, it's just like these larger bottles, for some reason, it's just like you got to get that grip on them. It doesn't make... So in the interest of uh, speed, Scott and Cole is going to do little daskies. Ooh, yeah, yeah, that. that's, uh, Ooh, wow. Ooh. That was great. So. Mm-hmm. Man, um, the branding is on point here. These big bomber bottles. Oh, yeah. The beautiful artwork. Like, I'm super into this already. Nice, Doug? Love it, love it, love it, love it. Before trying yeah. this beer, I'm in love. So. Oh, yeah, I'm already. 4.5%. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. M-U-S-J-E. How would you say that? Muscha? Muja? Muj? I just want to listen to you try to pronounce it. Muzji. Muzji. Muzja. Tiffany? She's not listening. Yeah? How would you? Never mind. Muzja. Ask me, what is it? Muzja. How would you say How would you say a word This M-U-S-J-E in French? Yeah. yeah. Mush? Mush. Mush. Oh, Guarantee yeah. that's it. See? Tiffany always knows this stuff. We're not that much anyway, of a smart. Anyway, 4.5% hazy. Uh, Ooh, blonde banana. Belgian ale. Blonde Belgian light ale with B-A-I-E-S, which I think... Oh! And um, Mandarin of Bavaria, which is mm. also probably what you just smell in there. That's a... That's a yes. So it's probably some sort hop. of Belgian saison type of thing. So either way, get, get it, it in, in yeah. yeah. That was a triple get it in your boys. That was good. That was decent. Oh, solid. Do you know what reminds me of? Their table beer. Beer yeah. in the tub. Total. Just because when I saw that, I was like, and this is that Super Moine yeah. numero 4. We had one of the ones the other night, uh, the other night when we did the podcast, which actually was like a couple weeks ago. Yep. Um, and it was the Super Moine n- number something. Super dry. Yeah. Light, very palatable, but still like they do... All Dunham's light, lighter beers, lighter ABV, oh lighter, like still have flavor to them. I don't know how flavor. they do it. Like, how do you pack so much flavor into so little ABV? Yeah, and it's like it's like it disappears on your tongue, or something. right? It's like there, like it's and so it's smooth like, and creamy. It's like bam, go. It's like it's like a, it's like a pow, like a beer yeah. powder, a and I mean that in the best way. It's so freaking tasty. But it's like I, I feel like this is what they're intending to do. Like, let's make a big, flavorful beer, low ABV, easy drinking table beer, like that Belgian style table beer. And yep. it's like it's like just. Bounce it out the park. Like. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, Dunham are just absurdly... We, we, we keep talking about Dunham a lot lately when we're telling people yeah. like, here in Toronto and other people about Dunham. And like, I don't know how to really say, but I keep saying they do like the Belgian style so impeccably well. Like I cannot think of another brewery, uh, like aside from Belgian breweries, that just 
nail all the styles and they're all generally some sort of belgian uh, inspired i mean maybe some of the stouts might not be as much and they're like but... mixed saisons they're always mixing this yeah. and that and the other and i'm like they just like, like flawless and that's not Super like cool. exaggerated you what do you think battles no she's in the building Queen. love it eh? yeah have you had much done on before um, not really yeah probably, probably. two tops yeah right for the episode of brought for you yeah so it, oh, back in the day so it would have been like the older stuff yeah so this is this clean cut. amazing and if you listen to episode 78, Seven, 77. 78 was our solo 77, one. my bad. Yeah. Um, you would know that they have a huge event coming up. August 11th. Insane. I, like This is probably the most excited since Witchstock I have yep. ever been. We all have all five of us in the squad. It's going to be huge. Tickets. Unreal. So um, we're going to vlog it. It's going to be amazing. So... Fooders Uni? Food Uni. What? Food Uni. So, so, so Food is United. Is the uh, the French version? Is it's, uh, I think it's the 50... most insane lineup I've ever heard at any beer festival yep. ever. About and... fifty four, I think he said breweries yeah. from and like all over the world. Yep, from Europe, from North America, and we're talking the cream of the crop, the best of the best. Yeah, we're talking Cantillon, Bellwood, like uh, like uh, Jay Wakefield. Um, I forgot about that. Uh, yeah. Jester King, yeah, other like, half. Stop. Uh, modern times, foam. He, he was going on. We just like our Bell jaws Woods. were just like dropping like this, 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 this. Because at first he started said, with the Belgian. That's not including Cantillon, right. Tilcan, Boone, and, and he said a uh, bunch of stuff we, we didn't know about, which I'm sure are gonna. Oh, I can't wait to try everything. We're going to both sessions. That's how real it is. Yeah. And uh, shout out to Noah Forrest. He's gonna be there too. Beerism, bro. Yep, beerism. But yeah, so it's gonna be a really fantastic day. So if you haven't got your tickets, we're gonna put the link in the description. Um, we uh, have nothing to do with it. We're nope. just covering the festival, yep. and we're just like beer fans and and, and just really supportive because we really respect what Dunham are doing, and uh, we're just excited to drink good beer with good people in the middle of the summer in a beautiful like are apparently it's on like the river, me? like by the border, so. by the Morocco border, in this beautiful like uh, field and stuff. You know, so. kind of like too. It's it's uh like. An all-inclusive event in the sense that you pay one ticket price. There's no tokens. You're not standing in line for tickets or tokens. Yes. You pay. It's all you can drink. Um, I, You're right. I've never been to a festival. Never, that's done it's that always before. like you go in, you get like a handful of tokens to start, and then you hammer through those in the first ten minutes, and you got to go line up and get more tokens. Not no, nothing no, wrong with no, that. No slight to that. Yeah. But I like this model. I mean, for me personally, it's like you go in, and especially because we're gonna go to both sessions, so we have. Like, just literally no rush. We get to show up, drink at our leisure. You know, we don't feel rushed to try. It's like, oh my God, we didn't have this one. We didn't have that one. 100%. So. And like, yeah, exactly. I feel like we can we can spread it out across the two sessions. We can do like, all right, so this session, we'll do the first one. We'll do all the Belgian stuff and maybe all the sours and move into IPAs and stuff. Right. Session, or something like that. We can actually organize. We're going to have to do a it. spreadsheet. It's going to be... Oh, it's going to be out of control. And the problem with beer festivals that we've talked about before with us is that we seem to have... It's not like no self-control. <laughs> it's, it's just like... It's kind of exactly but what it is. But it's pretty much... It's just like... Yeah. Would you like some of this? Um, and it's, it's basically like we can't... We never eat enough. And this time we actually won't have as much stress because the sessions are three and a half hours each. Yeah, right. Yeah. And uh, the three and a half hour sessions are great. Look at that little, oh, Ooh. perfect little bubble. Uh, three and a half hour sessions, but um, with which stock, with about half the amount of breweries, we didn't get what we needed. Like, it wasn't enough time. We had so, tokens to spare, and we really. I still kept the tokens. Yeah, we went pretty hard. I still like, have, we, we went trashed. hard. We went 12 like, till 3. We were, we were. And we were business, though. It was going, we have to try this, 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 this. I was genuinely stressed. Right. By the time you wait edge. in the lineup, and then, like, you have three or four, and, like, Trillium I need some, straight away. I need some food. Half, yeah. Or the, the. Go back outside, we right, have to take a break. Exactly. Have some, like, spicy and little burrito right. things. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I'm, I'm really curious to see how this kind of different business model. Uh, festival model goes compared yeah. to and it's a really high price like it's it's like 120 it is. bucks and, and then, then after, that's before tax right after like all in 120, 140. it's 140 bucks all in so but with that price does that include the shuttle because there's also shuttles to like to locals so. To, okay so I think we still gotta we got a dish for right, that probably like a 20 bucks for the shuttle or something probably from Montreal to Dunham it's and then I think the, I think the Dunham to the festival is free but Montreal to Dunham I think no it's it not 20 be, bucks like 10 bucks return maybe a 200 a day with food there with everything all yeah. said and done I mean but look what you're getting. You're getting world class breweries. Yep. You're getting pretty much everything you could ever want in a festival. Yeah. Um, I have a feeling some really cool people are going to show up to this. Like, there's going to be a lot of uh, old, like as far as brew brewers and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're going to sure. get all the big names there. Like for yep. me, it's well worth everything. I really hope it's not yeah. sold out for y'all yet. But uh, we were sort of when we did the podcast. I think you said out of 
they were like, oh, do you remember like 300 tickets left? But 300 left. How many for each session? Was it 600 per session or something? Yeah, pro- it was around that five or 600 per yeah, session. Right? So like, I can't remember. Yeah. But it was, yeah, it's pretty serious. Let's give this so, guy a go. So, beer number two, La, La Orange de Danum. Uh, it's a uh, sour, uh, blended barrel-aged Flemish-inspired sour beer. Uh, six five. Uh, so Flemish meaning it's uh, got that sort of ready orange hue there. And it's going to be sour. Like, if I know anything about Flemish sour reds, they're like really sour. Like, yeah, which is pretty good. Which well, I'm into. Let's uh, get, get it in us. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's not that sour. Not that sour. Not as not as much as I like, As much as I know about it. Yeah, exactly. It's like kind of like the complete, not opposite, but... Um, like the orange zest kind of... Yeah. Yeah, definitely orange zest. I was like, wonder where the orange comes from because he had we had this in the podcast. It was actually this bottle was the one that was in the front of the podcast. He left it with us because it hadn't come out. I think it came out a week or two after we did it. Right. But he was like, make sure you let it sit. It's not ready. Yet. Right. And, and they can't sell it because of the uh, the naked chick on yeah, the, the that, cover. That right. Astringent, tart. Yeah, it's got tartish. Yeah. Bitter, citric, like citric bitterness. Maybe yeah, not too bitter, like small citric. Yeah. Yeah. I can definitely get that, but I think almost that softens it. Like. Super Does soft. Does the orange refer to? Is there orange in it? Because it, it has that real nice rusty orange color to it. I'm wondering if there's normally Flemish are much darker than this, so quite potential. That's what I'm thinking. It is. And I feel like there's maybe not like actual. On the other side, is there anything? I'm gonna say. Well, that's French. Can though. you read the French? Potentially. Bien sûr, the fermentation, fermentation mixed barrels of oh red wine barrels. Right. Referment natural in the bottle, so it's red wine barrels, barrels, right. which probably is what what we're tasting. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. This was a bit tarty. Ooh. Correct. It's almost like a dry tongue at the end. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. That's what the flavor is. Now the the red wine isn't super strong. If we sat on this a little longer, it might have come out a bit. You can smell it though. The color might change too. Yeah, the color might change a little bit for sure. Mm. I like that. That's enjoyable. So I'm not trying to push along. I'm just like slowly pushing it through. So this uh, Saison Fleur, I had the OG of this um, at a place. Now, this is basically the Saison Fleur uh, Sauvage, but it aged in red wine barrels. So it looks like that I've got enough red wine barrel things. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with anything. Beer in red wine in... barrels yeah. is fantastic. It's a good um, And, uh, oh, it looks nice and clear. I didn't expect that. I think I had this as this wicked bar, like a pop-up bar in summer. In uh, Montreal, called Alexandra Platz. Like, if anyone's been to Berlin, there's Alexander Platz. You good? Okay. I'll take your time. Take no, no, for Russia. Alexander Platz, which is the center. You know the um, the Berlin TV. Uh, no. What's it called? It's like a. It's like the CN Tower, yeah, but the in TV Berlin. Tower, yeah. TV Tower, something like that. So it's the it's the center, like the public square, Alexander Platz. They call it Alexandra Platz. It's just like a, a pop up, like sort of um, a patio next to a, a sort of like a. A brewery called BVM. I forgot what it stands for. They're, to be honest, they're not the greatest brewery, but they have a wicked tap. It's like a beer hall type thing. But like, like a... mostly outside, they have like six beers on tap. A couple nice. of their own. They usually have done um, um, some other local stuff. The Thomas Cater sometimes. Cool. And uh, I had the original there, so they usually have at least some really good saisons because it's like a, it's totally one of our favorite patios to drink because it's like this random. You know, it's in Milex, so it's Mile Mile End mm-hmm. Park Extension Park X. So it's called Milex. It's halfway between. Okay. So it's kind of like this industrial area between Little Italy and like the Hipster Myland area and Park X, which is, I don't really know how to describe that. Is it walking distance from you? Or? Uh, you can walk there, yeah. yeah. wouldn't, but you could. You could. Um, probably like 30, 40 minutes. Okay. But um, yeah, it's like somewhere we all, when they go, they have these wicked night markets. They block the street off. They have all um, nice. the vendors. It's one of our favorite things to do in the summer. So I tried the OG there, and it's where I had a lot of Dun- uh, Dunham, True Dial as well. Like, I don't know yep. if I still have them now. But, um, yeah, so this is the reserve. The uh, wine barrel age is 6.5%. Definitely smell that red wine. Children, yeah. get it in you. Wicked. Ooh. Super dry. Super dry. Really dry. Thoughts? It's got to be a call. Thinking about it. Uh, thinking. It's got to be a call. We're thinking. I like it. The wheels are turning, right? Let them turn, mate. You take your time. It's really sweet. Well, sweet would in, entail the opposite of dry. So dry. getting the sweet out the first sip was just like boom. For me, dry. it's sweet. For me, it's sweet. It's not dry at all to me. Okay, so this guy was much tongue. more dry than this, this guy was. 
I'm not so, trying to be a dick. I'm just saying like it's not a not, yeah. yeah, yeah. I get like almost like a syrupy sweetness off. of So it. you can't have sweet and dry. Yeah? Excuse well, my ignorance, but like, no, no, no. Like the same with wine. Like a dry wine is a zero or a one, right? As the sugar level goes up, the sweetness. It's the kind of like the dryness is sweetness. It's still sweet and dry at the same up. time. You, what's that? So you're not getting the dry, but you're getting the sweet. I'm getting very, yeah, sweet. It's very... So I'm getting the tongue dry, but with this this other sip I just had there was a little less sweet than the one before, right. but still a significant amount of sweetness uh, in, in such a dry uh, beer. Also... There's a, there's a champagne quality to it. There's like a... I can, I can get that. A um, champ, champagne yeast almost to it. Yeah. And just to acknowledge a lot of the time when we do beer, like uh, reviews like this, folks always comment like, hey, you guys need to change glasses. Or, <laughs> what? And, and uh, yeah. you all are right. You're absolutely correct. For sure. It's just not always practical to have like, literally we'd have 10 glasses here. Like it's just so much to do and we have to keep stopping and editing. Like it's, it's whatever. Like, it's so we, hectic, And yeah. we're having like a dash. Like we're not having full glasses yeah. of this stuff and really analyzing. It's more just to give you guys a quick sort of first thoughts um, you know, ideas of what we feel about these beers. So we know it's not perfect at when we're drinking and sitting around, we always, always, always change glasses or wash every time. None of us like drink otherwise. So just so y'all know, that's why we're doing that. Otherwise we do it, uh, do it proper. I like it. Do you taste the red wine? No. Like more so in this guy for sure. Yeah. This one is like at the end of it. Yeah. But like, maybe that's what the, the dry tongue thing's coming from. Yeah. There's such finesse with each, with each of these beers. Like, the... the ye- it's like so details? You, yeah, there's like, it's so... Intricate. Yes. It's like, you can taste little things here and there, and it plays off your tongue, and there's... Uh, I'm starting to understand what you guys are saying with the dry, but there's like the sweet end. The dry, yeah. Like, it's it plays with your mind almost, and there's like... It's subtle, but it's bold. It's sweet, but it's dry. Like there's a lot going That's on here. That's why point. the wheels were turning. I'm like, yeah, like what is this? Right. Initially, I had it. I'm like, this is sweet. What you guys are dumb. What are you talking about? And then I'm like, but it's it kind of has. No, I'm like, it kind of has like a dry finish though. Like yeah. it hits you sweet, but then it finishes dry. And I'm like, yeah. I don't know. Um, I mean, these are relatively cold. We've had these out for like ten or fifteen minutes out of the fridge. I mean, the fridge. I think it there. is. Elwa made note of saying they do a lot of blends. So that blend specifically for this bottle, could, right? One be, could be dry, and, and putting it together, maybe you taste a bit of the dry blend. You taste a bit of yeah, the, you, you know. Might not get it. I think a lot of their stuff are, are blends. That's what they do. They have multiple barrels. By the way, check us a big fat thumbs up for Pretty Penny. Shout it out. with the necklaces. Oh, I'm not wearing mine. Pretty, it's okay. Uh, Pretty Penny. We got Ontario Brews for the T-shirt, the drink local T-shirt. Check them out. Links are all in the bios, and then check Brewheads. Brewheads. We're actually going to have a discount code for. We mostly talk about this guy, but the discount code applies to anything in the store. These hats, the barrel hats. This is like vegan uh, suede. Is it actual vegan wood. suede? Yeah, it is. Phil, are you asking? God, is it? God love you, Phil. Phil doesn't mess around, mate. All the Murica made. Full denim. This is just fire. So uh, This is know. legit has been my favorite hat for a long You've time now. You've said that so long. It's, it's, I can wear it front ways. I can wear it back ways. It is just a you can match it up back ways. pretty looking hat. But uh, do you know what? Like, people are killing it in the beer game right now, and I, I feel like in proud, the, uh, merch. proud to be a so- that's what I'm saying. Proud yeah. to be associated with these beer merch people yeah, right now. Many. Very much so. Yeah. And they've become like you know Phil's been a friend. Oh shit! Oh, oh wow. you Suck you it. would. I did that last. Yeah, the last video. Uh, video. Uh, can you get us a quick paper towel thing? BLT. Yeah. So this is a barrel aged Hellespock on Brett, which could explain the uh, thanks, man. The uh, still going, still going. Yeah, yeah. you might want to give that a little Struth. pourry. Struth, my dude. Oh, thanks, Matt. Get that in you. Yeah, yeah. Get it through y'all. Look at that. Yeah. Clean, clean, yeah. lean. Was it time to lean? Time to clean. If anyone ever worked in McDonald's, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. I know that guy. Oh, Elwa, you little cheeky rabbit. Very cheeky rabbit. Appreciate that. Can you uh, face that? Thanks, Matt. Uh, shout out to Notion right there. Make sure you go follow Notion. That Notion baby everywhere. Right. No dog in the building. So a Hellespock on Brett, which is very is a barrel aged too. Right? I'm saying full <clears throat> Brett. So I'm feeling this is gonna be lots Bretty. Of, lots of blood. Bretty. On se bien. What is it? On se bien, mare. Mare. I don't even know what that means. On or sounds like a swear. Two. 
Yeah, it's gonna explode again. Yeah, no, it's exploding. Right, oh, give us your glass. Give us your glass. Give us your glass. Give us your, your glass. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> what the fuck? This beer is like. Oh. There you go. Ah, oh, yeah. Is that a right for all of us? Or no. Just me. Is that just gonna keep exploding, or can we leave it this? No, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna continually erupt. Like, all right, uh, just put it in the front. We'll just yeah. keep it on. All right, Pico Lux. It's called. Um, I don't know, man. The kids just say get it in your eight percent. And yeah. yeah. Full brat. Uh, yeah, that's sick. Interesting. Who's ever had yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, Hellas block full brat? Who's ever had it's a like Hellas block? It's like a baseline. Yeah, right. Mm. All right. The Gym. bubbles are lovely here. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Now it's settled set down a bit. Yeah, Jim Soot. Jim Soot. Bradley. Jesus, Lord in heaven. Uh, it was pretty solid, man. Um, nice and light. Definitely a bunch of oak notes on the old nose there. Hmm? These are beers I'd want to like have it like have a nice charcuterie board in the middle of the table. Oh some yeah, some meats, some cheeses, some olives. This is some high pickles. level beer. This is I know not much soft like pickles. Oof, get a pickle in my shout out Adam Kemp. If you had the brew head, you smart ass brew head. Fucking... You know much you love pickles. We love you. Um. No, but like like a sharing platter with a bunch of family and friends, like one of these big beautiful bottles. Everyone has a glass, or have a little right. Have a little pour it around. Eat some meat. Eat some cheeses. Have a glass. Oh, this is good. This pairs well with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is like communal. I feel like, and the bottle really lends itself to that. It's like, it's meant to be shared. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's just good. It's fun because it's so big. Yeah. That's right. Like, these are like not nothing you could. I mean, you could not. You could do this on your own. The rest of them, sure, would be you like. Could. But I feel like, I feel they, like they're, they're better sharing. shared. Yeah, yeah. They're so much better sharing because it's such quality oh, beer and it's not something you really need volume of. Mm. That's right. Like half a bottle of what is this? Six, these are seven fifties, right? So like you know, th- three seventy five each. Like I have bottle. no interest in taking one of these bottles and downing myself. Like I, these are meant to be shared, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Agreed. And I think they know that. That's the reason why they put it in. Yeah. These bottles, I'm right? Guilty. I feel guilty. I mean, yeah, you feel guilty, but it kind of like it would be a little like sickly after a while. That's what I'm thinking too. Right. Yeah. It's a bit much like to have too much to yourself. Yeah. But like and three, four people like we're doing right now, share yeah. it around. Everyone gets to enjoy. And, yeah. And I feel like they're also meant to be paired with foods and, and you know this what I mean? definitely a pairing. As the know. French culture kind of, you know, that's kind of how they roll, man. French people do food and drink. They, so they well. care about it so much, right? Yeah. So every time I come to Montreal, I'm like, oh my god, you go to the it's too much. It's insane. Like yeah. you go to the, like the little shop around the corner and have like a like I had breakfast. I'm like, oh my god, this is the best breakfast I've ever had my entire life. Like it's insane. Yeah. They ca- because they care so much. There's passion there, right? Yeah. And the same thing with beer. Like yeah. yo, Dunham knows Guess what's what going on. Guess what we found on Friday? Breakdown. Peluso number two, way closer to home. No. On Bobian. Is it new? Relatively, yeah, it looked brand okay. pretty, pretty new. I'd seen it on like when we went to go there a couple of times right. on like Google Maps or whatever, and I thought it was something else to just use the same name because right. it called Micro Brasserie Peluso. Sure, like, it's not the same place. Right, it's Depeneur Peluso. So Peluso is just like a super bomb uh, uh, beer store, Depeneur beer store in Montreal, and it's a little bit like out of the way. It's like on the east end. It's where I used to live ish but like yeah. yeah it was closer to where I used to right. live. So now it's like going out, like getting out there on a bus from where we live is such a pain in the ass. And basically, we were wandering with Renee. Shout out to Renee and Rebecca. Renee and Navarro. And Big ups. Yeah, no, it's like 40 minutes. It's 23. <laughs> Relax. Wow. Relax, no, fam. No, wow. Time to the Tiffany. With Girls the are attitude. on a schedule Men still. are busting balls. So anyways, Can we, we were wondering. like this? Yeah, we can always. Now, what you won't do. So... <laughs> We went to, yes. So we were just wandering past. We went to Ildegard yes. and we were yes. walking to vice versa. And we yes. walked past it. We're like, what is this? And it's as good as the other. Pol- it's Peluso. Amazing. Same brand. Same, uh, like, range and stuff. Pretty much. Maybe Sick. a little smaller. Like, the place is larger, but the range is a bit smaller. But it's uh, phenomenal. Way closer. So, so much, much closer. Right. They had just five, and They got all the crazy IPAs. So something that I'm going to be going to a lot more. Sick. Uh, very, very cool. So this is a fantastic beer. Ready for a nice Russian Imperial style oh, to wrap this up. Good lord. So Tiffany doesn't get mad at us for taking so long, guys. She has places to be sold. <laughs> Chuck us a thumbs up if you like <laughs> Tiffany yelling at us. She like 
What's that? 15 minutes. We have 15 minutes to try this beer, review Rock it, top. and GTFO. Rock do you know what I could do with that? The attitude. Beer attitude. Yo. Man, this is Yo. Classy. So, that I looks know Russian-y and imperial-y. <laughs> we got oh. tick us. That's like tick us, see? You know what? Every, I have like maybe a dozen Russian, Russian imperial stouts in my beer fridge and beer cellar right now because they're nothing you have to rush to to get to they're not like no they're the easiest to just right but then I keep putting them off because I'm like well I have to drink all these IPAs and double IPAs and northeast IPAs first yep then they end up stacking up and I'm like and then all of a sudden but the other thing is I don't want to drink by myself these are sharing they're too beers big. right and then anytime you guys come over it's like we've got a million other things to, to do. do already so it's like they just keep stacking up and I'm like man I got a fridge full of fire imperial stouts right now <laughs> That I would like to get into, but there's never, ever going to be time to. Well, we'll get to them. I've got exact, the exact same problem. Yeah. No, look at this burping problem. Yeah, I've got sales and, and stats out the ass. I'm just like, yeah. when am I going to get to them? Because I'm in Toronto right now. Brad picked up a bunch of Bellwoods for me. We were about to... Like, I'm going to come back with a shit ton of haze. I'm not even going to get close to <laughs> any touching any of this stuff. It's out of control. Anyways, uh, wow. it's called Sakawa. It's a 9.5% Russian Imperial Stout with uh, Costa Rican uh, coffee from Detour in, I uh, believe, here in Toronto. Mm. Well, By the way, the freaking amazing. The stout game in Montreal is next, team. next level, dude. Montreal is really fire right now. Absolutely. All I really want to do is get it in me. Mm. Oof. Yeah. A little thinner than I expected. Yeah, me too. A little less syrupy. I thought that was going to be syrupy. Same here. Uh, not that that's a good or a bad thing. Nope. It's just like I thought this was going to be literal like uh, like that's syrup. Thick. You think it's thick? I mean, it's, it's medium. I yeah, think medium we're, body's we're, we're com- soft at all. But we're comparing it to uh, Peche Martel is what we're comparing Yeah, it, me, it was only like a couple weeks ago. It was uh, yeah. Jeanne yeah. Peche for DDCL. No, I'm absolutely not taking anything away from it. No, no, I just, thought it was yeah. going to be... Um, uh, viscous the coffee is out of control on it. It's like a shot of dark Italian espresso. Like it is super creamy, yeah. super smooth. Um, I'd say pretty dry for the most part. Oh yeah. For I think all these beers are generally on the dry side. Yeah. Um, for the most part. Except for this, because I thought this was kind of sweet. That was a little sweet, but it was also dry. It was also dry. So dry. who even knows? Yeah. Um, yeah. Super fire. Yeah? I'm not even surprised. Down them are uh, out of control. Hmm. So make sure you check out Dunham uh, online. Dunham, uh, this shit. I think they've started destroy, destroying certain beers to the LCBO. As I was telling oh, us, yes. that blew my mind. Not sure like, which wow. ones. Okay. So take a look. It's probably the big boys, and yeah. it's probably like Summer Hill and stuff like that. Or you can do the specialty order thing. Right. That's what it was. That's. Spe- I think it was exclusively that. I yeah. Feel like it was, they didn't have. How uh, do people do that? Do you know? Because I can't remember. Yeah. There's. I've ordered from them before. It's through their vintages section. You have to go in, or can you do it on the app? Uh, I did it online. Oh, you can do it online? Yeah, okay. so they send it, you order it, you go to the vintages section, because I bought the Sam Adams Utopia through that, oh. through the LCB website. And they send it to the store? They send it to your local store, and then you, and then you go pay, pick it, it up. Yeah. Do you pay there, or do you pay online? Uh, I think you have the option of doing either. Either or, so you can be yeah. like, take it there, save it for me, right. or you can be like, yeah, I paid up front, you just walk in and pick yeah. it up. Yeah. So go do that. If you're in Ontario, definitely do it. If you're in Quebec, go to the damn brewery, or go to literally any depreneur they got. Uh, a, a super solid range of Dunham from the smaller guys like the Cyclops uh, series the two yeah. hops yep. or they I've seen even just in Peluso I saw a, a whole bunch of the I was like yep got that at home got that at home got that at home because yep. we got a whole bunch of Dunham right we now we got a bunch yeah we got a bunch more too. we still got a bunch more we got the oh, same lad. ones each so these are the separate ones we didn't have lad. each right so that's why we decided to review these yep. ones um, so yeah definitely check out Dunham shout out to get to Elwa Food Uni check the link in the uh, description it is just going to be the festival of the summer where if there are tickets left do yourself a favor and get one just don't or even two question or three, it or just it's buy worth a few nights in Montreal friends. Oh, yeah 100%. go hang out in Montreal take the shuttle bus down I don't think you're going to get an Airbnb in Dunham which is why I'm saying stay in Montreal no. there's no point even bothering no. you elsewhere just come to Montreal get the bus yep. make sure you bring something to piss in because when we did that coming back from uh, Bose that was a little cranky uh, because of that tinkle it was unpleasant to say the least yeah. uh, if you enjoyed the episode make sure you chuck us a big fat thumbs up hit subscribe below hit that little notification bell there so you can get the uh, updates whenever we uh, ding drop the new vids follow us on social media at BOS Podcast check us out on 
uh, Apple Podcasts, anywhere else you get your long form audio. And huge shouts. Tiff pointed this out the other day. A bunch of people have been reviewing and rating us on okay. uh, on Apple Podcasts, which is okay. great. Thank you so much for people who have been doing it. Um, Thank you. Y'all are the best. Actually, if you t- type beer, yeah. you have to swipe maybe four times on the app. No. And we come up. So I feel like it's slowly In working. Or just while well, we're here in Canada, so right. I'm not sure if that's a difference. I think that, yeah. I didn't get to check when I was in Texas, so I was way. trying. But do that, uh, rate, review, subscribe, check us out anywhere you got to uh, get your podcast. That is it, y'all. Thank you again for watching. We'll see you in the next video. And of course, get, get it in ya! ya.